Hello and welcome back. In the past few lectures, we have been discussing uh, generating functions. And uh, in the last lecture, uh, we discussed the exponential generating function uh, and uh, looked at uh, the product of uh, 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 generative functions which are exponential. Now, uh, we also looked at uh, what is the combinatorial interpretation of uh, this product. Now, uh, similar to what we did for the ordinary generative function, we can also talk about the composition of uh, exponential generative functions. So for this, uh, let us start by assuming uh, there is uh, there are two uh, uh, generative functions, uh, EGFs, where uh, an uh, counts the number of uh, ways of uh, uh, making, let's say, type A structures, uh, on uh, an element set, okay, uh, where we assume a zero to be zero, just like we did in the previous case, and uh, uh, let us also uh, assume that b n is the uh, is the number of uh, ways to put b type structures on uh, an, an element set. Now, once we have uh, these two, uh, so we have a of x and b of x uh, with corresponding to uh, the uh, generating functions, exponential generating functions. So we now uh, let uh, another sequence cn uh, count the number of ways to first partition the set n, right, 1 to n, uh, to non-empty blocks and then build uh, air type structures on each block. And then considering these uh, structures as uh, elements, build B type structures on the set of uh, these blocks. Okay. Then uh, the claim is that uh, C of X is equal to B of A of X. That is the uh, exponential generating function which counts the sequence C n uh, is the uh, uh, is a, is the generating function of uh, uh, b uh, substituted with uh, uh, you know a of x for x okay. so uh, this is our uh, theorem so how we want to uh, prove this theorem but to to make uh, you know uh, things a little more intuitive let us see what we are actually doing with the structures when we make the uh, c type structures Okay, so here, uh, here is some uh, nice uh, pictorial representation of uh, what is actually happening. Right? So in this box, we have this set 1, 2, 3, etc. Right, 1 to n, let's say for n is equal to 11 or something. Then uh, what we can uh, say is that we have partitioned the set into different uh, different blocks like this. Right? So we have this uh, uh, one part is like, you know, just uh, including 1 and 2. Then you have a part with uh, 3, 6, and 10, another part with, uh, let's say, 3, 4, 7. Then 8 is by itself a part. And then uh, 12, 9, and 11, uh, yeah, so up to 11, uh, 12, uh, is another part. So we have this, uh, uh, we have this partition, right? So, and each part is non-empty. Then what we do, we put uh, type A structures on each of these sets. So I can make a type uh, A structure on the two element set. Similarly, on this three element set, I put uh, an A type structure. Okay. So there could be several ways of doing this, right? There is precisely uh, A3 uh, ways, right? Small A3 ways of making uh, A type structures on this three element set. Right? That is the definition uh, of uh, you know the sequence A, right? Similarly, we have uh, uh, A1 uh, ways of doing this. Uh, a two ways of doing uh, on 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 this uh, set, etc. Right now, once we make these structures, right, so we have the a structures on each of these blocks now. Right now, consider these as elements and then type a uh, you know uh, and and make a b type structure on the uh, on this uh, set of uh, uh, a structures. Okay, so then what we get is a uh, c type structure. Another way to represent this is uh, in the second figure, right, where uh, 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 this figure, where uh, where we have 
uh, you know, we have the set. Uh, in this case, we have not given any num uh, names or anything, but just to we have the set, and then uh, we could, of course, uh, name them if you want, right? You can make it a set. One, three, eight, two, four, five, right? Something like that. Now, uh, I think I missed one thing. Maybe it's six. So uh, now what we do, we partition uh, it into uh, blocks. Like so, we have one, seven, uh, six is a block. Uh, three is a block by itself. Two and four is another block, and five is a block. Right now, on each of these block, I put an A type structure. Right, so this represents that I'm making an A type structure using all these elements. So that is the that is the meaning of uh, this representation. Right, and then uh, once we have this, take each of these uh, A structures and then considering them as elements, I make a B type structure on on the set of all uh, all A structures that we have. Right. So this is uh, what we mean by uh, the composition, right, in the exponential generating function. So now uh, one can ask. Now one can ask, uh, uh, what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, proof uh, that uh, you know uh, C of x uh, precisely counts the uh, I mean, B, B of A of X precisely counts uh, 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 the number of uh, C type structure, right? So this is something that we want to uh, we want to do. Okay. So uh, I will give you a sketch of uh, the proof. So uh, like in the previous uh, case. So what is the uh, idea here? So we know that uh, we start with uh, set 1 to n, and then we split it into different blocks. Now let us start with the assumption that, I mean, you know, when I split into different blocks, it must be, uh, you know, some number. So let us say that there is exactly k block, right? So it could be, you know, k could range, of course, from 1 to, uh, you know, uh, 1 to uh, n itself. So therefore, uh, you know, uh, we, will, uh, we, will, we will fix uh, k for some value, right? And then assume that we have now split into exactly k blocks and then see what happens now if i do it into exactly k blocks right there could be several ways of doing that itself and then uh, let us say ck of x is the generating function right no we are not looking at c of x but ck of x is the generating function for counting the uh, composition in this particular case when i split into exactly k blocks okay. i don't look at other values of k only for this particular value, right? Uh, and then I say that, okay, now if I do this, right, I take the set n, 1 to n, and then partition into exactly k parts, then put a structures on each part, and then uh, put a b structure on the a structures, right? So if I do that, uh, let us see what happens. Now we know that there is exactly uh, k blocks, right? So each block is basically a subset, right? So take uh, take this set, right, on this block, then we put an A-type structure. Now, uh, uh, now we are doing this for each of the K blocks. So if you want to talk about the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, generating function of uh, making A-type structures on each of the blocks independently, then we know that we can we can obtain this by taking the product of the generated forms, right? So, if, for example, we said that if I want to make, uh, uh, you know, like a partition uh, into two parts, then uh, put uh, uh, put uh, you know uh, a structure on the first type and then b structure on the second type, then we said that a of x into b of x will give the generated function for doing this. So now we are partitioning into k parts, right? And then putting a structure on each of the parts. So therefore, a of x into a of x into a of x k times will give the uh, generating function for doing this. But there is only a small uh, catch, right? So the catch is that see when we were doing uh, this, the different uh, type of objects, a type, b type, c type, etc., right? So when I when I take you know when I partition, right? 
and then uh, I put an A structure on the first, B structure on the second, and then C structure on the third. Uh, you know, the ordering of uh, these parts actually matters, right? So if I have K parts, the ordering of the parts will matter because on the first part, I am going to put uh, A structure, second part, I am going to put B structure, and the third part, I am going to put C structure. But since I am going to put A structure on each of these parts, right? At uh, the first block, I am putting a structure. Second block, I am putting a structure. Third block also, I am putting a structure. So therefore, it doesn't matter which order I have, uh, you know, these blocks, right? What only matters is uh, that uh, how many blocks are there, right? So therefore, when I look at, uh, you know, A of X all raised to K, uh, we are basically counting, right? Uh, you know, considering all the uh, possible permutations of the blocks also. So there is exactly k factorial permutations and each of them will give the same object because we are putting a structures on them. So therefore, uh, we have to divide by k factorial to make sure that we don't overcome. So this gives the idea that a, you know, a of x whole raised to k by k factorial is the generating function for uh, c k of x. Right? So c, uh, c k of x. And, uh, you know, whatever is the number that we started with, right, n elements, you look at the coefficient of uh, x raised to n in that, that will give you precisely uh, the number of ways of obtaining uh, C type structures on n elements by doing this. So, uh, so what we have shown is that CK of x is equal to, uh, you know, but there is, there is another thing that once you make this, we have to put uh, B type structures, right? So it's not CK of x. It is just to do uh, the a, a type structures on these blocks. Now, then we have to make uh, B structures on on the K uh, A structures that we have obtained, right? So that we can do in precisely B K ways. So therefore, C K of X is now uh, B K into uh, A X whole raised to K by K factorial because A X whole raised to K by K factorial is the number of ways we can put A structures on the K blocks. And uh, BK is the number of ways to make B structures from the K distinct objects that we have obtained, right? So therefore, it is BK into uh, AX raised to K by K factor. Now, uh, so if you know for each K, right, what is the K of X, then I can get C of X easily, right? C of X, uh, the generative function for uh, C is basically the sum of all this because, you know, like when we... Uh, counted by, you know, separated by the cardinality, right, like of the set in which we are building, uh, our uh, formula itself is the uh, summation over all, all values of it, right. So, summation k equal to 0 to infinity, uh, 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 c k of x will give the generative function c of x, which is what we do here, summation k equal to 0 to infinity, b k into a, k of, uh, a of x all raised to k by k factorial. But what is this? This is Precisely the, uh, you know, so if you take B of X, right, B of X is precisely summation, uh, summation uh, B K into X raised K by K factorial. If I replace X with A of X, uh, I will get precisely summation B K A, A X raised to K by K factorial. So therefore, it is the substitution of A of X into B, right, B of A of X. So this is the uh, idea of the proof, right? So we have uh, shown that if I uh, if I if I take uh, a set partition into uh, non-empty blocks, put uh, type A structures on, on on the set, then put type B structures on this uh, on on the set of uh, A type structures. What we get uh, yeah, if it is uh, counted by the sequence C n, then uh, C of x, the generative function for C n is the uh, composition of uh, uh, a of x into uh, b, substitution of a of x into b. Okay, so we basically substitute a of x into uh, b. Okay, so that is the composition of uh, uh, generating functions. Now let us see uh, some application uh, for this. Our first example uh, is uh, the following that we have 
uh, a number of ways, let's say, to partition a set of n people, right? uh, and uh, you know we, we we want to count the number of ways to partition a set of n people, and and then once you partition, we want to put uh, each block of people uh, and ask them to sit around uh, uh, in circles, okay. And uh, the claim is that this is precisely n factorial, right? So we are basically partitioning people, uh, you know, uh, you know, n people, n persons into blocks, and then ask each, uh, you know, person to, uh, not each person, each block of people to sit around uh, in circular tables. So you have like circular tables with uh, pairs on, on uh, around it, and uh, we will ask. Uh, you know these people to sit around uh, let's say uh, these uh, tables now how many ways uh, one can uh, do this so the claim is that this total number is n factorial right? so let us prove this using the composition of generative functions so let us denote by uh, ak right uh, as the number of ways uh, the people can uh, sit around in circles, right? So basically, what we were doing uh, in the exponential generating function was uh, that you know you split uh, into uh, k blocks, right? And then you put uh, uh, you know type a structures on 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 each of the blocks, right? So here we are asking the people to sit around. Uh, in circles, right? Each block of uh, people to sit around in circles. Now, if there are k people uh, in uh, in a block, right? Then uh, uh, then uh, there is k minus one factorial ways to put them in circular uh, way, right? So circular permutation that is basically uh, k minus one factorial. So therefore, uh, we know that the uh, uh, generating function for uh, uh, this right uh, for people to sit around in circles is uh, summation n minus one factorial into x ratio n by n factorial, which is the exponential generating function. And what is that? Uh, this is uh, summation x raised to n by n, right? Because uh, n minus one uh, factorial and n factorial cancels out, you get uh, n, and which is log of one by one minus x. Right? This is something we already have seen. So the generating function for uh, you know, making the type pair structures, which is a of x, is uh, log of one by one minus x. Now, uh, what else we do? So we partition, and then uh, you know we are just asking them to sit around, but uh, then we are not doing anything, right? We are not making b type structures. So if we are making you know b type structures, then uh, we could uh, use the substitution. But if we are not doing the b type structures, what exactly can we do? So, uh, if you think about it, like, you know, uh, when we do nothing, that uh, there is precisely one way to do it, right? Do nothing, right? So, we, we, we partition, right? Make this hash structures and then do nothing, right? Which means that we are uh, doing precisely one way, right? Uh, so, the coefficient of uh, uh, bk or, or B, uh, bn for any n is precisely one because no matter how many uh, blocks are there, uh, we have exactly one way of doing a thing. So b of x is now summation, uh, you know, one uh, by n factorial x ratio because we are looking at the exponential generative function. What is that? This is e raised to x. We already saw this several times. So therefore, uh, uh, b of x is e raised to x. So now, the uh, composition uh, b of a of x is. Uh, you know, x is substituted by a of x in e raised to x. So e raised to log of 1 by 1 minus x, which is 1 by 1 minus x, right? Which is the generative function for c of x. Now, what is uh, the coefficient of uh, x raised to n by n factorial in uh, the series expansion of 1 by 1 minus x? So 1 by 1 minus x is summation uh, x raised to n, but then we want to look at the coefficient of x raised to n by n factorial in this. Uh, which is precisely n factorial because we want to multiply and divide by n factorial to make the coefficient to be 1. 
and that is uh, what we have right so n factorial is the number of ways of uh, you know making the c type of uh, you know c, you know uh, c type uh, success on uh, uh, n element sets which is basically asking the people to iterate around in uh, circle right so this is the there is n factorial ways of doing this okay now uh, let us look at one more example which is slightly related so find the number of ways to uh, separate uh, you know n people into a number of uh, groups and then let them sit around uh, you know again in circles but then after uh, sitting them on the tables we serve them uh, with either uh, uh, juice or water right so uh, this is what uh, uh, we know we do now how many ways of uh, doing this right so how do you uh, how do you uh, count this right so we can we can use the, the same idea so we know that a of x is uh, log of 1 by 1 minus x as we uh, did before right asking people to sit around in circles after partitioning them right a of x is log of 1 by 1 minus x. Now, what is uh, bk, right? So if, if there are uh, k blocks and we are serving either water or uh, uh, juice to the tables, there is precisely two ways to k ways of doing this, right? We can decide whether to give water or table, uh, you know, uh, juice. Uh, uh, therefore, two choices. And uh, uh, we have two ways to k uh, possibilities for, for uh, uh, for the k, right? We we can uh, do that, and therefore b of x uh, is a generative function for uh, the ty type b structures on these tables, right? Is the precisely uh, summation uh, two raised to uh, k, x raised to k by k factorial, which is e raised to two x. Now e raised to two x, we have c of x is e raised to two and then x is with by log of 1 by 1 minus x, which is 2 log 1 by 1 minus x, which is 1 by 1 minus x whole square. And we know that uh, the series expansion is summation n plus 1 x ratio. But we want the coefficient of x ratio n by n factorial. So therefore, we multiply and divide by n factorial, I get n plus 1 factorial, right? So there is n plus 1 factorial ways of doing this. And this is kind of surprising because when we, uh, you know, when we, uh, you know, when we do this, uh, you know, uh, two raised to k is coming, right? Like when we do this uh, serving of juice or water, that, uh, you, know, uh, you know, somehow, uh, you know, like we will feel that like there is the you know, factor of two must be coming, but that is, right? Like two raised to k must be present somewhere, but uh, that is not the case. So uh, it is nice to see that we get n plus one factorial. As the number of ways of doing it. So these are two uh, examples of using the uh, composition. I mean, one can have several other examples, but uh, let me now uh, go to uh, some uh, few other uh, things. Uh, I am going to give uh, uh, an application uh, into, uh, you know, into uh, let's say uh, RNA uh, counting RNA uh, sequences. And uh, similarly, I want to also look at uh, uh, an application of generative functions at the end uh, to wind up this uh, topic, where we will prove uh, Euler's famous uh, pentagonal number theorem. Okay. So these two are the uh, applications, and with that, we will uh, wind up this uh, part. So here is an example uh, with uh, RNA counting. So we want to count the uh, number of RNA chains with some uh, condition. So, what is, uh, uh, you know, a K-link uh, RNA chain is uh, basically an ordering of the uh, nucleotides. So, what are the nucleotides? Uh, one is uh, uh, adenine, then uh, you have uh, uh, guanine, then cytosine and uh, uracil. Okay? So, these are the uh, nucleotides which are present in RNA chains. If you are looking at DNA chains, then uh, you will be replaced by uh, something else. But other uh, things are there. But then uh, there is some uh, differences. So what we are going to do here is to count the 
uh, k-link uh, rna chains okay so where i want to uh, specifically count the two link and uh, three link chains and what so basically a chain is an ordering of the uh, you know letters a g c or u where a g c u represent the uh, nucleotide uh, which are the uh, uh, molecules uh, now Uh, how do we do this, right? So we have uh, uh, the condition that we are allowed to use at most three uh, adenine uh, uh, or uh, three guanines, uh, two cytosines and one uracil. These are the only things available, out of which we want to make two link or three link uh, RNA chain. So how do you do that? So uh, here is uh, uh, a solution. So we are going to prove a little more general uh, question first. And then, uh, you know, as a uh, you know as a special case, we will we will solve the RNA code. So suppose we have uh, you know p types of objects. Okay, so p different types of objects where uh, uh, you know for each i, uh, you know the type i object, there is the n i uh, of them available. Right. So in this case, we had. Uh, we had uh, you know type a objects. There were uh, three of them. Type G object, there were three of them. Type C object, there were two of them. And type U object, there was one, right? So similarly, type I object, there is NI of them available. Then the uh, number of uh, distinguishable uh, permutations of uh, length K with at most NI objects of type I, right? Uh, you know, to draw from is the coefficient of X raised to K in the uh, following generating function. So can you guess what is the generating function for this? Okay. So think about this for uh, uh, some time uh, before uh, proceeding further. Okay, so uh, it should be clear if you have understood how the generative functions work that, uh, you know, I can take the product of one plus X plus X square by two factorial plus etc x raised to ni by ni factorial to uh, uh, to represent i mean you know so this uh, summation uh, of 1 plus x plus etc x raised to ni by ni factorial represents the choice of uh, you know either 1 uh, 0 1 2 or up to ni uh, of the type uh, let's say i object right so then i take the product uh, uh, i ranging from 1 to p this will tell you uh, that uh, if i if i'm looking at at most, uh, let's say, uh, n uh, objects that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm drawing exactly n objects, then the coefficient of x raised to n in this product will tell that, okay, from the, uh, you know, the first factor, which is 1 plus x plus, etc., x raised to n1 by n1 factorial, which uh, term I have chosen, that will tell you how many copies of, how many copies of uh, the type 1 object I have chosen, right? So if I took uh, if I take x square by 2 factorial, that will tell me that I am choosing two copies of the type 1 uh, object. So similarly for each type i, and therefore that is the generative function, right? And uh, so the generative function for the RNA chains is basically, you know, you substitute uh, for each of the type i objects with the corresponding numbers. So 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial. Uh, for uh, the type A and type G objects, right? Because both of them have three of them. And therefore, it is square of uh, this uh, polynomial. Then we have 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial for the type uh, uh, C object. And for the type 1 object, there is only uh, one available. So either 1 or 0, I can choose 1 plus x. And hence, uh, you take the product of uh, these uh, polynomials, you get a polynomial and look at the coefficient of uh, x square by 2 factorial. Uh, and uh, one can verify that it is actually 15 in this case. And if you look at the coefficient of x cube by 3 factorial, you can verify that it is actually uh, 53. And uh, that is uh, precisely the way to uh, you know, uh, count this. And one can generalize it to you know other uh, uh, examples uh, very easily 